Hi and welcome to yet another quick review. Today we're gonna to talk about Sony PlayStation 4 Pro and Sony PlayStation VR and also a little bit about Logitech G29 wheel. So let's start with a PlayStation Pro. So first of all I had already two PlayStation 4 gaming consoles and both of them were just a standard PlayStation 4 from the old days before the Slim and PlayStation Pro arrived into the market. So I decided to change one of them to a PlayStation Pro just because I thought it's gonna provide a better graphic performance and it will provide significant visual difference within the games themselves. However, uh, my generic opinion right now is that it's not worth the upgrade probably, but it's maybe provide something but it's not visually quickly noticeable I would say. Even though the price is quite high uh, and maybe in the future the games would support it, will support it much better than we are right now but within those games which I currently have tried it's all the same as before so in terms of like is it worth the upgrade if you have the money and you're trying to buy a new console for yourself and maybe that's the way to go because the price difference is not that big comparing to uh, let's say standard PlayStation or slim version of it but if you just want to upgrade you probably need to try those games first on the PlayStation Pro which you are usually playing to see if there is any significant difference or maybe check if those developers are going to provide any patches for them specifically to improve the graphic performance and that's of course if you don't have 4K TV which I don't and probably most of the people don't have them of course PlayStation Pro can provide a higher resolution for the 4K TVs and support them some of the games with upscaling but generically it's for a normal user like me, which is, I have two TVs, both of them, just a standard Full HD, I don't think it's worth the upgrade, to be honest. Let's talk a little bit about the PlayStation VR, which I have right here. This is a standard Sony PlayStation VR, it's only one exists at the moment. I tried it in a game store in UK and really liked it. I liked the experience it gives you. So within the game you can see your own body, you can look around. Like within the Riggs game, for example, you can see all the parts of the robots and the big guns. And it provides a quite a nice experience what you actually present within a game, your own presence within a game. Regarding technical parameters, this one have a full HD screen inside, divided by two. So half of a full HD resolution per each eye. But the problem is not that. So that screen is quite high resolution, I, I, I would say. It's probably not the best it could be, but the main problem is resolution within a game. How the, render, how the game uh, and the PlayStation renders all the environment around you. So in most of the cases, when environment complexity gets higher, to keep the frame rate at a high level, the game starts dropping the actual in-game resolution, per se. So it's dropping not just number of details, but probably renders the whole game at a smaller resolution and then upscales it, so you can see like a blurring effect. That is quite noticeable in a Valkyrie game, if Valkyrie, a flight, space flight simulator and battle game, which I like a lot. So in some maps where you play with opponents and it's a lot of broken spaceships and meteors around you you can see that while frame rate is still high and all the head tracking and all the movements are still very smooth now you can see everything is quite blurred like a blurred vision and that is again because the game probably renders a much smaller resolution than just upscales it for you in the maps where are where there are less details available on the screen, like less space broken spaceships, less meteors, at the same frame rate you may get quite much higher resolution comparing to those most complex maps. So what else can I say? The head tracking is quite good, but you need to have a PlayStation camera as well as a mandatory accessory for this one to work. So if you're buying this, don't forget to get a PlayStation camera. Both available in the old version and in the new version at the same time. Prices, well, check your local stores, I guess. Is it worth to buy? That's an interesting question. 
So some of the games are extremely good and I like them a lot. I play mostly Valkyrie game with this one. At the same time we tried with two of my friends games like uh, Drive VR, which I have, Drive Club VR, which I have right here, it's a full version. And so Riggs, Valkyrie, Drive Club VR, and also that quite expensive Robinson game. The interesting conclusion is that in some of the games, independently of how much you play, you cannot get used to uh, motion sickness. And that, from person to person, may be just light or quite severe. Like one of my friends, he couldn't survive 15 minutes within various of these games. And especially this one was just a killer immediately. Personally, myself, I cannot play this one even though I bought a full version, it's just unplayable. As soon as you start moving, well, you just, well, you're just looking around, everything is fine, but when you start moving, especially turning from left to right, it just immediately screws your head and you don't really, your brain doesn't realize what's going on, cannot realize what's going on, and your body completely <laughs> comes to a cl close point to vomiting. In other games like Drive Club VR, for me specifically, this game is fine. But for two hours who tried it, we cannot survive for too long. So we start sweating. Maybe we need to get used to it, as I did probably playing Valkyrie. But it's questionable. As I said, one of my friends really couldn't stand that for any more than five minutes. So, again, some of the games are fine, some are not. To buy a PlayStation VR or not, you probably need to try it as well. And this is a hard choice because re in reality it's a great experience. And I guess as technology go moving forward, going to advance, probably with some patches to the games or in some other ways, or maybe different mathematical models of the world, they can get rid of what motion sickness you get from uh, playing virtual reality through the PlayStation VR type of games. But you need to try it for yourself and figure out what does it mean for you specifically. And also game to game it's very different. So it almost requires a review for each game, almost like a testing to figure out what percentage of people can survive it or cannot. So from one side, once again, it's worth trying from another side, it depends on how your body will react to it and would you be able to play it or not. So, And Logitech G29 driving wheel. So this is a PlayStation 4 version. As you know, from introduction of PlayStation 4, it was a big problem for most of the users of a previous PlayStation 3 and also users who had a PC and a PlayStation 4, which used to be able to use the same wheel on both platforms but with a PlayStation 4, suddenly we realized we, we cannot. It's due to some specific chip requires identification with a PlayStation 4 to use high-speed USB ports. And finally, after a long, long waiting time, Logitech came up with G29. So this is a G29 I just got a few days back. Uh, I've been waiting for it to arrive in local stores for quite a while. And finally it's here. So what can I say? I had G27 before with all the seat, the proper seat and mount and everything, like racing seat, as it's supposed to be. So comparing to that one, this one feels pretty much the same. It's missing the stick to change the gears, which can be bought separately from Logitech. But at the moment, well, I don't have it. So this is how it comes out of a box, just the wheel and the pedals. So immediately what you can notice, there is a switch on the top between a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation 3 version of a communication with, <laughs> through a USB port. And I guess, I, I think with a PlayStation 3 setting it should be able to work correctly with a PC as well. So it has all the buttons you get on a PlayStation 4 controller, ex except for these motion sticks. And it has a three pedals. 
So pedals are great. So both clutch, accelerator, and especially a brake pedal. It's quite firm, and I like it a lot. So it feels like a real brake pedal on a car, not just a toy pedal which goes all the way back and forth with almost with no resistance. I think the pedals actually are better comparing to the G27. Uh, any negative points about it? Really, no. I think that's pretty much as good as it gets. Maybe to some extremely, extremely professional player with a game simulators like a car simulators, maybe, maybe he will be able to find some negative points, but I really don't. I think that's as good as it gets and I highly recommend this product. So if you're playing games like a drive club or project cars specifically, that does really work well. It also has a delay as everything does, like it is impossible to make instant responses from the driving wheel into the PlayStation just because you have a protocol to communicate through, there is a USB protocol. So there is a slight delay, but it's present in all the consoles, it's present in all the PCs with all whatever uh, controllers they have. So there is no way around it. But here it's quite minimal, so it doesn't really hurt your gaming experience and you can get used to it specifically so you know what you can need to turn some split millisecond uh, not quicker but <laughs> earlier i guess otherwise as i said it's just perfect and so as a conclusion what can we say about all of this about the playstation pro the playstation vr and the g29 driving wheel so G29 is definitely worth buying, the PlayStation 4 version is perfect, I guess, for the gaming. It's probably the best you can get, at least best from everything I'm aware of. So PlayStation VR, great thing, extremely new, unseen, per se, gaming experience, but you may get some sort of a disorientation and as a result uh, motion sickness. And as a PlayStation Pro, is it worth upgrading or not? If you have already PlayStation 4, just a normal version, just keep it for now and see what happens. Or check specifically with, for the version of a game you playing usually, does it support the extensions for a PlayStation 4 Pro or not? And if it does, it's worth looking at it somewhere. Maybe some of your friends has a PlayStation Pro. Maybe somewhere in a game store you can look at it and decide for yourself, is it worth or not? As to me, it was probably just a waste of money. A little bit about the game, so quickly. So Drive Club VR, for me, playable. For two other persons, for one half playable, for another completely unplayable. Robin Zones, not playable for anyone. So not me, not all of my friends couldn't survive it for more than a couple of minutes. From a PlayStation VR Worlds, there are a couple of games here, and I think the London Heist is fine, pretty much. Sp the Scavengers Odyssey, that is about 10 minutes at most, you can survive in that one, or I can, and after that again, motion sickness, nothing good. Ocean Descent is fine, and the rest of them I didn't try, actually. Yeah, there is one more game which I don't know the name for, it's on the same disc where you descend down on a skateboard or something like that, that is also causing motion sickness for everyone who tried it. So again, some of the games like Valkyrie you can play for hours, no problems at all, but that's for me. For other people it's causing motion sickness as well. Maybe it's something you need to get used to, maybe that's the secret, or again it may depend from person to person. So try PlayStation VR with a game you like or you think you may like and if that combination works for you that's definitely worth buying in that case. Thank you very much and bye.